right, Engine Performance Expo viewers, you recognize this guy. Back again. We're here. Now, trigger warning, we're going to say something here in a second that <laughs> may uh, offend people's preconceptions of, of engines. But okay. we all love engines. Yep. But we have learned something with this little technology that's in your hands that yeah. kind of changes how you look at an engine. Yeah, that, that, that's true. A lot of times we look at the engine as, you know, this one system, right? So it's, it's an a, engine. It's an eight-cylinder engine. Most mm -hmm. of us are working on pushrod V8s. Right. But the more we look at it, the more what we realize is it's not one eight-cylinder engine. It's eight one-cylinder engines. Yeah. And as we start to try and manipulate the tuning and the delivery of air and fuel and spark to the engine, right. we find that those individual cylinders behave differently. They're a lot like kids, and if you have a whole <laughs> bunch of kids, they all have their own appetite and their own things that make them happy, things yep. that make them mad. They got a little personality. Yes. So, so all of them together are great, but they're individual. Right. And so our engine behaves the same way. So we mm -hmm. decided to apply a little bit of technology and see if we could squeeze just a little bit more performance out of this 393 cubic inch LSX project engine. Right? Mothering it along right here. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. So I, pacify them, make them happy, get the best out of them, coach right. them up a little bit. Well, how, how, how can you know what their interest or Yeah, so, so one of the mad. things that's a challenge is when we look at the engine on a dyno, mm -hmm. we're really just seeing the sort of cumulative average of what all the cylinders are doing. And, we, and when we tune, yep. we typically degrade the quality of the tune-up to sort of, you know... Protect uh, the worst pre behaving cylinder. Yeah, protect the weakest one. So yeah. that means maybe... That cylinder's got the right amount of timing and the rest are compromised a little bit, you know, air fuel delivery, that kind of stuff. Well, what we wanted to do is separate the engine and look at each cylinder individually. And so the way okay. that we did that is we actually took some combustion sensors. These are super high speed, mm -hmm. um, high pressure. These can handle about 4,350 PSI of pressure. Wow. Uh, and it's tiny. It's only five millimeters in diameter. So whatever that is, 150 thousandths of an inch diameter, really small, small. sensor. Yeah. Now what you gotta do to use this appropriate load is you actually gotta drill into the cylinder head. Yeah. So what I did is I called our buddy Chris Straub and I said, hey, yeah. you know those heads that you got on this engine? Have you got any that maybe you need screwed up? More. I just need <laughs> one more. And of course he's like, what'd you break? I'm like, no, no, I didn't break it, but I wanna. Yeah, we're gonna break it though. <laughs> so, uh, so he sent us one that was like a blem casting or whatever. Perfect, yep. And what I did is I grabbed it and I took it in the mill mm -hmm. and I started probing of where we could drill through the deck, the thick yep. part of the cylinder head here, below the water jacket. Mm -hmm. And a uh, good thing we used a practice one because I actually penetrated the water jacket in uh, a couple of these areas. Yep. But ultimately we found out where we could drill into the head here. And then we drilled and tapped mm -hmm. and screwed in this little combustion sensor in all eight of the cylinders. So now nice. we can actually look at cylinder pressure graph data against crank angle and learn all kinds of things about the engine. So. What we found immediately was the tune-up was really compromised on some cylinders over the others. Right. Now we could go in and use this cylinder pressure data and just track, for example, one point, which is what we call CA50. Right. So right. CA50 That's crank angle. angle. That is crank angle. So it's you're the got, crank, you angle, crank where, angle and you've got pressure. Uh-huh. So it actually takes the data from pressure and temperature in the cylinder, mm -hmm. and it calculates where 50% of the mass fraction in the, in the chamber mm -hmm. was consumed. Now that's okay. a really good indicator of tune-up for us. It will generally precede the point of maximum peak pressure location. Because it's only 50% of it being burned. Correct. But what's nice about that is because it's integrated from all the data, it tends to average out some of the errors. If you were trying to chase an exact peak pressure location on every cycle, the engine doesn't repeat very well. It's such a cyclic sort of uh, variation. Yeah. You'd drive yourself crazy trying to always get peak cylinder I'm pressure to peak happen peak. exactly at one spot. So rather than do that, we look at that integrated value of CA50. easier to find. That's right. And so what we do is we target a location. For example, what I did is I started out and I said, I want all eight cylinders mm -hmm. to have the correct ignition event to give my CA50 value seven degrees after top dead center. Now later I could go manipulate the overall timing to move it from five to seven to nine or whatever. But Because there may be some place where it's better it, to be that. But, and, the, and we hope the dyno will tell us that. But you, but you can pick a place and say, here, we're gonna get all cylinders to behave the same. That's right. 50% burn at seven degrees, 
You said after top dead center? After top dead center. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So now what's wild is when we started doing that is mm -hmm. we have our normal ignition timing table and then we have yep. trims. So there's eight different ignition trims for each cylinder. Right. And then every you know couple hundred RPM, we made spots to, to vary it. What's wild is how different the cylinders are from each other and how much they'll change over a range of RPM. You would think it would have some slope straight up, straight down. No, no. It'll be like add nine degrees and then the next box you might be taking away two degrees and the next one yeah. you're adding 12 like L literally 10 degrees spread of timing cylinder to cylinder and from like rpm range to rpm range like yeah. it's not a easily predictable just put this slope in and it does what you think and i think that's the hardest part to get your head around yeah but it took several hours of continuous tuning and programming and uploading but by the time we got done mm -hmm. it made a huge improvement on the way the engine ran I mean, Just was, that one data point of C850. 39 foot-pounds? At 3,600 RPM, we yeah. found 39 foot-pounds of torque. Just uh, on optimizing timing. Yep. So now, we always suspected that the engine needed more timing down low yeah. like that. Yeah. The problem is when you get down low, it's real easy to have too much and make the engine detonate. Yep. So to be honest, you're just kind of scared to do that on the dyno. Oh, of course. And so um, being able to look at the cylinder pressure and know for sure that it wasn't knock or pre right. Yeah, You're, you're not going to hurt it. It's you, say, I can put this much timing there. to it, and it's totally safe. That's right. And so that was the real advantage overall, and then being able to make every cylinder. And so the other thing that was interesting is you could see each cylinder's individual contribution to the overall power. Right, oh, it'd be easy wait. to measure one cylinder. And go, oh well, it makes you know uh, fifty foot pounds. So fifty right. times eight cylinder. Well, that's four hundred foot pounds, right? But the reality is, yeah. some of them are making eighty five, and some are making seventy two, and some are making sixty eight, and some mm -hmm. are making eighty one. So having one combustion sensor in each cylinder allowed us to say, look, I don't have the ability to make every cylinder do the same thing because right. every cylinder doesn't have the same airflow, and we'll talk exactly. about that in a minute. Yeah. But if I could just optimize the airflow that's there for every cylinder, make them all as good as they can be, first of all, it lowers the spread between yep. cylinders, and it just makes all of them contributing the most. So yep. I think from 3250 all the way to 7250, we averaged 11 foot-pounds of torque better, right. which is a significant improvement on a naturally aspirated engine. Oh, yeah, it's a huge number. On, and, of course, engine. that will pay dividends under boost as well, right? And it's essentially free horsepower. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, if you have to change parts or anything, of course, there's, the sensors themselves are very expensive. And this they is, are. This is software, but you buy it once, and That's then right. you can use it on everything. Yep. So there's so much more you can do with combustion analysis than mm -hmm. simply find the best timing, right? right. Like we can look at uh, the amount of energy in the system being released over time. That's that that mm -hmm. CA50, you know. Um, we can look at the adiabatic compression and expansion curves as we log, uh, as we show logarithmically the pressure and volume in the cylinder, mm -hmm. which means we can go to our friend Billy Godbold and say, here's what it's telling me about my cam timing. It's saying, I can look right here at this point up there mm -hmm. and say, it shows me that the intake valve is closing too late here because right. of the variation in cylinder pressure at each point at bottom dead center, at 10 after, at 20 after, um, and the same thing on the exhaust stroke. I can exactly. say, well, I can see in the middle of the exhaust stroke, it has a lot of back pressure. Or I can see that it has a low pressure area being caused by the pulse tuning in the, in the pipe, but it's yep. at the wrong time. Right. And so as we start to look at it, we can compare what different header lengths and sizes and primaries do. And ultimately for years, everybody's always said, oh, you need equal length headers. The reality is you probably need eight different length headers <laughs> Could be, right? to make it just perfect. But ultimately, once we get it on the dyno, we sort of have what we have. But as an engine development tool, the combustion analysis is second to none, and we proved that on the Engine Performance Expo LS. Well, and what's cool is like you can literally take one header and run it on one side of the engine and run a different totally. header on the other side of the engine and actually see right there. You don't have to look at the average of what the whole thing does. It's like, okay, what is this? What is that? And then you can still see how it behaves. Yeah, we were, we were messing around the other day doing some calculations in the software to calculate the torque and power in the cylinder. And we were blown away at how precise it was relative to what we could get from the engine dyno. What, it was unbelievable. One foot pound? Yeah, I would say between yeah. one and three foot pounds worth of error, you know. Yeah. And, which is amazing considering the dyno is just averaging. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's got power pulse inputs every, you know, 90 degrees. So uh, I'm pretty stoked. I don't know how you feel about this, but to me, the effort that we put into it, we had to get a spare head. We had a, you know, it was a lot of work to get in there and collect all that data, interpret it, use it to make a tune-up. But man, I don't know any other way I could find you 39 foot-pounds of torque on a naturally aspirated engine. Like, uh, no. It's not going to get there from here. So, no, I, but um, what's cool is this is 
current NASCAR, current F1 technology. Th these sure. guys have been doing this for a long time. I think back 2005 or six, somewhere sure. in there. Yeah. I remember seeing stuff from GM that was doing this for NASCAR. So we're just taking that technology and making it available to you guys. What's really neat is we're gonna be able to share with everyone what we're learning on yeah, this absolutely. engine, because now it's done. This is just telling you about it is phase one. This is really cool, but the really cool stuff is going to come from what we share in years future yeah, because as we strange things with the engine to see what it tells us. Yeah, it's a development tool, right? right. It allows us to, to make changes and isolate the results and understand where that came from, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and, and, you know, the cost of this type of equipment has come down significantly. We're using yeah. that Plex PCA 2000 combustion okay. analyzer. I mean, those things are about, I don't know, maybe 15,000 bucks or something. Right. Traditionally, that was 80 to $100,000. You know, the sensor technology hasn't gotten a lot uh, less expensive yet. It's still fairly expensive. Right. You know, one of these, one of these little five millimeter Kistler sensors, they might be $4,500. Right. However, you don't have to buy one for every cylinder. You could simply move it around from cylinder to cylinder in the engine. True. And it takes longer and it's more tedious but it's a way that it becomes, you know, commercially affordable for right. the average shop that so could do it. So 20 grand, you, yeah. could, you could begin doing this for that much money when, when reality is for a, a tool that can measure that, that's amazing. It's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's one of those sort of things that it opens up a level of information and data that's just never been available to us at this level before. If you're not some hundred million dollar, you know, Formula One or NASCAR team or whatever, yeah. you're probably not going to have access to this type of stuff. But now for, let's say, under $30,000 all in, mm -hmm. a guy could outfit an engine and be gaining this kind of information. That is pretty exciting. That is. How you, could you hook that up and run it in the car? Oh, 100%. You could go right down the racetrack with this. Yeah. Like, you can almost skip the whole dyno. In fact, that's exactly what we're doing on our project with the Sorceress Street Rod Car, that, that twin turbo pro mod. Right. It's hard to dyno an Something engine like that. that. Right. You know, it makes 5,000 horsepower, so we put sensors in the heads and we'll just take it right down the racetrack. There you that's go. That's pretty cool. You see, that's why we come to hang out with this guy. It's always <laughs> something cool. I literally walked in yesterday and I had some really cool information I thought was awesome. And I saw the results of this and I instantly realized what I had seen yesterday was not cool. I like rained right this on was your cool. parade. Oh, I to, it was like a <laughs> downpour, you know, but that's why we do this. And so yeah. hope you guys in, enjoyed watching this segment. So let's talk about it some more. What a day, what a day, what a day. But yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. They told us, don't start cars. We are not going to listen.